Wow. Wow. What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Oh, my God. Wow. You know, we were watching what was a snooze fest of a game, the Raiders versus the Rams. You know, the Rams, uh, you know, they're depleted. They're beat the heck up and stuff. They literally picked up Baker Mayfield, who was cast aside on Monday, got him in there Tuesday night, and he ended up playing almost all of the game. We're talking about a guy who literally hasn't had enough time to have a cup of coffee for the Rams. I think he was 22 of 35 for 230 yards and a TD pass, right? And here it is. You got Derek Carr. You have the Raiders that all of a sudden have been getting hot. You know, they won a whole bunch of games, four games, five games in a row. And if they had won tonight, they would have had a chance to go ahead and start thinking about playoffs. You know, Josh McDaniels had kind of quieted the, the storm of about how bad things were with them. And we had seen a Raider fan, Joski, that we have not seen in a while. Joski was in here talking, you know, because because the, the, the Raiders looked like they were, you know, going to take over and just do great things with this game. And they were up 16 to 3. 16 to 3. But you had a red zone interception before the half, and you had an interception to end the game. So you got two picks from Derek Carr. The funny thing is, listening to Joe Ski, you know, talking about our quarterback, you know, Dak Prescott, he ain't anything special. You know, he's slightly better than Derek Carr. Well, Derek Carr only had like 136 yards passing. And most of that was Devontae Adams, who made some incredible pass play catches. It's like you got a guy who literally was burning, you know, Jalen Ramsey and, you know, no space. And he's literally just lighting them up. That's the only thing he hit. That's it. And here it is. You guys, you know, there's, there's two minutes left in the game. You bog down, you have an incredible punt where you give the ball to the Rams on the two-yard line. Two-yard line. The Rams have no timeouts left. They got to go 98 yards and a minute 40 seconds with Baker Mayfield. And here's the thing. You ended up having the dumbest penalty. You get a sack of Baker Mayfield. The clock, of course, is running. They lose nine yards, and a defensive lineman knocks the ball out of the quarterback's hand. Which means, of course, it's a delay of game and so on, but it's also considered unsportsmanlike conduct. So now you stop the clock, and you give them 15 yards and a first down. Boneheaded plays. Instead of finding a way to win, the Raiders found ways to lose. You know... People are always on board with the Bill Belichick guys and stuff. Bill Belichick coaches, you know, you can't say Mike Rabel because he didn't coach before with uh, New England. But Bill Belichick coaches suck. Josh McDaniels, dude, are you kidding me? You had a wounded animal here with the Rams and you let him go. So back to this whole thing of, you know, where Joe Ski was talking about that Dak Prescott ain't nothing special, that you know, uh, that, that he's only slightly better than Derek Carr. Sorry, he's a hell of a lot better than Derek Carr. But shout out to Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield, who, he was throwing dimes. He looked incredible. He, in fact, looked better than Matthew Stafford has all season. Seriously. Seriously. And for a guy, he can't know the playbook. I don't know how he can know the playbooks having only got here Tuesday night. Shout out to him. There might be a quarterback controversy for next year um, between Stafford and, May and Baker Mayfield. I don't know. But again, it's only one game, but one game that, that really just turned 
turned everything around for the Rams. Now, interesting thing here, um, during the game, there was a clip um, from Amazon Prime videos, kind of, you know, you're sitting here thinking about how bad this game is. Like, it's beginning to rain. I, I'm feeling some raindrops. I see a full moon, but I'm feeling raindrops. I, I see the moon, but I'm feeling raindrops. Is, is somebody pissing on my head again? Hey. Okay. I'm getting raindrops, but, but I see the moon. Okay. Anyway, be that as it may. It may be Amazon Prime got tossed to bone because the games have been so bad, with the exception of the last two minutes of the game. That game was a snooze fest. Let, let's be clear. That game was a snooze fest until late in the fourth quarter. But an Amazon Prime video comes out where they got a clip of about 35 seconds of Odell Beckham Jr. who's talking about him and Barkley. And it's like they're in a barbershop setting, or at least they're sitting in barber chairs like. And he says in the video, me and Suquan had unfinished business. So we also heard from a, a, the guy who said he was his driver. I don't know if he was his driver or not, but I saw this video that said, you know, he's like, screw Adam Scheffner. He doesn't know Jack. Um, I'm going to give you the, 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 the real deal here. He ain't going to the Cowboys. He's going back to the Giants. And that might be the case. It might be. And it may be that Odell is kind of pissed at the Cowboys because they didn't sign him. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the context. I don't know when that was recorded. I don't know if that was recorded when he was in New York and was doing it as a tease or whatever. Or whatever. But I do know Odell likes the spotlight. He likes to be out there, much like Jerry Jones. But at this point, I look at it and say, I'm done with Odell, okay? I, I'm done. I, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay with the team that's got me here. I'm ready to ride or die with the guys that have gotten us this far. And the thing is with football is it's crazy. You never know who's going to win or lose. Now, again, it's almost comical to me. Because I had Philadelphia, okay? Philadelphia is in here, of course, blovating, you know, like he always does about how good the Eagles are and stuff. And I said, listen, I'm not going to take anything away from the Eagles. The Eagles are a really good team. They are a really good team. But I was pointing out how Shady McCoy went off like crazy, how good the Eagles were to come from behind to beat the Colts, and that this was the biggest win of the season when the Eagles – came from 10 points down in the fourth quarter to win against the Colts. And that this was a good team with, you know, they were that full, full crowd capacity. You know, Jeff Saturday, the new guy, and everything else. And two weeks later when the Cowboys win, and they score 33 points, literally three times what the Eagles scored against the same team, plus three, 33 in the, th the fourth quarter. And he's like, oh, well, they just gave up. This is a bad team. And it's like, listen, listen, I get it. You're a homer. But at least be a little bit fair. You have to look at that and say, well, the Cowboys were having a bad game, much like the Eagles. And they turned it up in the fourth quarter and scored 33 points. You're sitting there bragging and boasting that your team was having a bad game and had to score 10 points from behind to win. And that that's more important than what the Cowboys did? Come on, man. Let's be for real here. All right. That's where we are. We got the Texans coming up. It was nice seeing Eastside Herald um, tonight. We'll probably see him tomorrow and Saturday, but I guarantee we won't see him on Sunday. The Cowboys have a 1 o'clock game, and um, along with the Eagles versus the Giants. So it's going to be a very, very busy early half of the game for us. I think I'm going to keep it easy, and I'm going to do a taco sub taco sub for Houston uh, for Saturday. I think we're going to do some steak taco on one side and some shrimp taco on the other. So we got a little variance in there. But other than that, that's all I got for you. Um, let me say shout out to Joseph Heatherly, 
who has sent me a whole bunch of stuff for giveaways. We gave away one of the Super Bowl footballs already. I've got two more of those that we're going to give away, and I've got more stuff that's also coming as well. So thank you very much, Joseph, for being there for me to give this stuff away to you guys. And um, remember, remember, tell the people you love, you love them, because you might not get the chance again. And I love you guys. God willing, I'll see you in the morning.